breaking family generational curses. And today I'm going to be preaching on the eagle anointing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Many people have asked us, uh, messengers, us, what is the eagle anointing? Well, I'm going to share that with you. I can't do it in three minutes. But I'll share that with you today. And we're going to have a glorious time in the Lord. Which it's good to see everyone. We praise the Lord for what he, the Lord, is doing. Next Sunday will be Black History Sunday. This is a historical event. You'll be educated on black history. And we want you to be here next Sunday for black history. I was just thinking today of some of the ministers that we've had down through the years, especially the lady ministers. Uh, many of you may or may not know we was the first church in Lenore City, Tennessee, to ever have a black minister to preach. We made history in 1975 when Reverend George Wright from Dayton, Ohio, came and held a revival for us. And then we had uh, lady ministers. We had uh, Pastor Judy Shaw from Sioux Falls, uh, South Dakota. Had Pastor E.R. Allen. Uh, she's deceased from Chicago, Illinois. Had Dr. Francine Morrison with her mink Bible cover. She'd have that. She, she had a, a mink Bible cover. Amen. And then uh, we had others. And we had the most recent, you may have heard of her, Prophetess Teresa Davis. Amen. So we've had uh, a lot of black ministers, male and female, down through the years. And by the way, Teresa Davis will be back with us in June for our 44th anniversary. Amen. It's June the 3rd to the 9th. Hallelujah. And uh, somebody asked me, he said, why do you have her so much? I said, well, because she's real. Because what she says comes to pass. And she prophesied to me in 2012 and told the, told, prophesied to me that my prayers would be stronger than medication. And that proved to be true. Amen. My prayers are stronger than themo care, uh, fair, uh, what do you call it? Themo, yeah. Uh, what's the other one? Radiation. Radiation. Amen. Canceled operation. People totally blind receiving their sight. People with diabetes are healed. There's no cure for diabetes. Got a written statement from one doctor. One of our members was healed of sugar diabetes. And the doctor said there's no more diabetes in that body today. That's incurable, folks. That's incurable. Your prayers will be stronger than medication. I don't say that braggadociously. I say that bragging on my Lord Jesus Christ Amen. because I can do all things through him. Amen. So we're, we're looking forward to our 44th anniversary. 44 years we've been on this corner. We'll be in June. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich, and we thank God for that. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to have my sister Lois today. She's, she, uh, she's, she's like Mama Bear. I think she's been hibernating for about four or five weeks. I know because of this snow and rain and the bad weather she had been here, but we're glad to have her today and glad to have all of you. And you're not going to leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Are we ready? Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What did I do with my phone? I left it on my desk. I know where it's at. Just, no, it's locked. It's locked. I'll, I'll take care of it. Remind me not to say nothing while I'm up there because people. <laughs> well, we're, we're alive sometimes. I, well, welcome. Oh, we're going to have a good time today, I'm telling you. <laughs> Welcome, Natalie and Miss Gina at this time. Come on, hallelujah.
still have a praise in the house today, amen? I don't know about you, but I've come with my praise. I've come with my mind. I've come with my victory today, amen? The devil can't stop me. The devil can't stop me. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Going down to the river, down, down, down. Down to the river, down, 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 down. Down, 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 up, 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 up. Oh, nothing like live Facebook. That's a little too high, got an echo. Sister Martin, would you come up here and help me sing this song? Yes, thank you. Oh, that's the reason I pay you the big bucks, huh? Yeah. Stuff like this. Nothing like live television, live Facebook. We're, we're live. There you go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. This beautiful woman right here is my first and only wife. Come over here, sweetie, and tell them how long you've been blessed with me. Oh, my goodness, 57 years. 57 years. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't finish. Oh. <laughs> turn, turn her mic down now. <laughs> that, is, that he's been blessed with me. Amen. I get amen to that. Amen. We're amen. both blessed to have each other. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. I told somebody one time, and I, I think I said this publicly on television, I'm not perfect, and she's not perfect, but we're perfect for each other. Amen. 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 Here's sort of our theme song. Uh, he just keeps right on blessing me. Amen. I don't know about you. But he blesses me every day. Yes, amen. amen. You know, I, I have a gift when I get up every morning. I've got two gifts I can see out of both eyes. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise amen. the Lord. And he does. He just keeps, keeps right on. Keeps right on blessing us. And I'm amen. so glad to see everybody. Yes. Hallelujah. Day. Yes. It is good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, the sun is shining That brings today. them out. <laughs> <laughs> and all your faces are shining with the love of God. So we are happy today. Yes. And we are happy you're here. And I know God is going to give us something special today. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
The first lady of Victory Temple Church. Give her a God bless you, folks. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shake hands with somebody before you're seated and tell them that you love them and don't lie about it. Faith in the Father and faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost. Victory is all. The center away, faith in my Jesus. Can anything change? Faith when my spirit is discouraged and weak. When the friends, the ones that I really trusted, they turn against me and speak faith to be happy when I'm falsely accused faith in my Jesus when I'm so Faith in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, victories are won, demons will tremble, the sinner awake, faith in my Jesus, can anything change? Listen, faith when the family is sick and in bed. Faith when the message comes, your loved one is dead. Faith to be happy when nothing seems right. Faith, faith to believe that everything's going to be right. I've got faith in the Father and faith in the Son. Faith in that Holy Ghost, yes, Lord, victory. The sinner away, faith in my Jesus, can anything change? Hallelujah. Just remember, folks, if the Christian life was easy, everybody would have it. Amen. You, uh, no one's told you yet you're in a warfare it's every day it is every day and it seems like you just get the victory over one thing and lo and behold the devil brings something else in your pathway but this is a daily walk with the Lord everybody say daily walk with the Lord every day of our lives well uh, we're living a day when uh, people really don't want to serve God they want to serve mammon. They want to serve er earthly things. But we're not about to come down to the devil's level. We have a remnant. We're not about to come down to the devil's level. Come on, Bishop, play the song.
Satan lies to me. He tells me I'm finished. I was never, never free. He makes me feel down hard. He wish I never, never started. But on the cross I see. And I say, Mr. Devil, oh boy, you had better. Serve the Lord. They live for themselves, always trying to get more money, houses, and land. They act like they serve, they're gonna be here forever. Walk in the paths of sin, but I made up my mind to keep the Lord deep down with me. can be seated. Here's an old time favorite. Almost home. We're just about just about there. Somebody asked me, what are think our chances are getting out here alive? I said they're getting better every day. Jesus is coming. Oh yes, Lord. For many long years I've traveled this road. I'm weary and tired of carrying this load. So often I'm tempted by Satan to bow. But who knew my heart to turn back now? Well, glory. Hallelujah.
sing that chorus, everybody. Oh, almost home. We're home. I know that my race, it's almost run. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, Lord. Troubles and trials. He's ready to go. <laughs> Margaret, is there anything at your house you need to go back and get if the Lord comes to? Not a thing. Not a thing in my house I need to go get. Ready to go. Woo! Hallelujah! We're almost home, folks. I said we're almost home. We're almost home. Well, as a stand at the river. Anybody feel that way today? We're almost home. We just hold on just a little bit longer. Jesus is coming. You know, he says, in my one translation, John 14 says, in my father's house are many rooms. No rooms once you get out to holiday in. That 12 or 16 little box they put you in for overnight. That's a room. Honey, he's got mansions. Yes! He's got mansions! And he's got streets of gold. Walls of jasper and gates of pearl. Ain't nothing cheap about our God. He didn't cut no corners on this thing. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. He's coming again. I said he's coming again. Lord of God. Thank God for this blessed hope that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the sinner has no promise of tomorrow, but we do. Because if we die in the Lord, we'll be resurrected with him. 
to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. I feel those Holy Ghost doodads going up in my spine right now. Oh, glory to God. Those, those big ones, those that you can hang your hat on them, glory to God, they're so big. Just, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is in this house right now. Why don't you touch somebody and say, feel this, this is the Holy Ghost. Touch them and say, feel this, this is the Holy Ghost. Feel this. Feel this, this is the Holy Ghost. Well, if you need a miracle, do you need a miracle? Woody Martin's going to tell you what to do. Call on my King Jesus. Your miracle's coming through, King Jesus. I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you know what it is? He'll come walking right by your grave. Well, if you need a miracle, let me tell you what to do. Call on my Jesus, your miracle's coming through me. I know you hear me when I'm down here in trouble. Who's come walking by my way? I've been in the valley, but I reach that mountain top. I'm looking for that city, good God, I can't stop. In Jesus, I know He hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble. I know you hear me when I pray. When I'm down in the trouble, you come walking by my way. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Do you know it? King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. When I'm down. We'll come walking by my way. Some men they won't sell, some men they won't know. But give me Jesus, he's a rock of my soul. King Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, we'll come walking by my way. Sing and shout, there won't be nobody to put me out. King Jesus, I'm on the white ground, here's the white ground. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, he'll come walking by my way. King Jesus, I know you can't be right.
says. Some of you got offended when I put my crown on. But Revelations 1 and verse 6, 5 and 6, the Lord says he has made us kings and priests unto him. So in the future, you can refer to me as King Woody. God has made us kings and priests unto him. I think kings live good. I think kings eat good. I think kings have any desire that they have. I believe a king would probably sleep in a king-sized bed. I don't believe the king when he retires at night says, now why if he get the get the rollaway bed out of the closet, we're gonna retire one time. No, 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 no. He's got a king size bed. Amen. He has made us kings and priests unto him. It may not look like much, but I'm a millionaire. I'm, a, I'm an heir to what God has and what God is. We think of the prophet stated that this was left over for New Year. Give our musicians a God bless you. Are you ready for the word of God? You can be seated if you can. Is everything going all right, Facebook? Amen. Amen. Let us know if things are not going right. We'll try our best to correct it. I, I, you know, I like live programs. When uh, you heard... Uh, Favor Adams from Miami testify that God gave her a miracle and her miracle baby. And I prophesied to her when her child would be born, she'd had four miscarriages. I did this over via radio. She called in a radio show. And I prophesied to her, never saw her before in my life at that time. And I said, you've had four miscarriages and God's going to let you carry a baby full term. And she, and say he or it, she will be born on April the 5th. Yeah. How accurate is the Word of God? How accurate is God? He's precise. When God puts a word in my mouth or a prophet's mouth or a prophet's mouth, it's as though God himself's talking to you. And you need to be like E.F. Hutton. Listen. When God speaks, you need to listen. Amen. And God is speaking. Hallelujah. You know, they're criticizing Mike Prince or uh, Pence, I should say, for saying the Lord talks to him. He, the Lord says, my sheep know my voice. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying in the church. It's Satan's desire to destroy Christianity, but he's not big enough. This thing's been tried in the fire, and the fire couldn't burn it. It was tried in the lion's den and the lions couldn't chew it. And this too shall pass. Today I'm going to bring to you what I call the eagle anointing. By the way, next, next Sunday will be Black History Sunday. I want you to be here. Sister Wanda King will be coordinating that program as she has done so gracefully many years and does a fabulous job. I like history. Amen. I am thankful that we made history in this church, having the first black evangelist in the Loudoun County, in the city of Lenore, in the city of darkness, the dark city. Lenore means darkness. And God has us in the city of darkness to let the light of miracles shine throughout the earth. But on, uh, it was January the 17th on a Wednesday that I left the church here and uh, nothing was going right. It was one of those days. Now, I know you see me bubbly and happy and smiling and shouting, but sometimes I'm doing that by faith because I sure don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like praising God? 
praise him by faith. Praise him because he says to praise him. Might be good to let out a big old juicy hallelujah when you're depressed. <laughs> and I went home, my wife knows me so well. She said she knew she knew something was wrong. I said, I don't want to talk about it. I didn't want to re rehearse it in my mind and tell her what was going wrong. So I went to my prayer room and I started praying by faith because I didn't feel like praying. Didn't feel like praying. When you don't feel like praying, that's the time to pray. Because you can pray a breakthrough in your state of depression or storm that you're in. So as I'm praying, I'm sharing with the Lord everything that's going wrong. You know, just like he didn't know, I have to remind him. He knows all things. How many times we come to altar and say, Lord, you know this, and, and you know that, and you know I've been done wrong, and they didn't treat me right on that job. I didn't get that raise. I said, just like he didn't know. He knows all things. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail, but as I was praying, the Lord spoke these words to me and said, I'm glad he talks to me. I'm glad he talks to our vice president. Said he did anyway. Amen. He said these words to me, son, I'm going to give you an eagle anointing. And I'd preached on eagles down through the years. And I don't think I've ever heard that term. I mean, it's nothing. I'm sure it's not new, but it's new to me. When God says He'll do a new thing, He'll do a new thing for you. If you've never had a new car, He gives you a new car. That's a new thing for you. He gives you a husband or or a a, a wife you've never been married. That's a new thing for you. I've never heard that term to my knowledge, and I'm questioning God. What is the eagle anointing, Lord? And then he says, what does the eagle do? Because I was going through a storm. And I said, well, the eagle, Lord, the, the eagle gets above his, the storm that he's going through. His strong wings and his eyes, it's so powerful. And God says, I'm going to give you victory over every storm that comes up against you. Well, that was good enough for me. I think I almost shattered a hole in the carpet in my prayer room. So I got my dance in before the Lord. And then I wanted to go on a demon hunting tour. All right, devil, where you at? Come on. I'll give you a 666 headache. Come on, where you at? How many know when the anointing comes, it makes a difference? Singing is good if it's anointed. Preaching is good if it's anointed. And when the anointing comes, it destroys the yokes. Now, we begin to study the characteristics of the eagle. Now, we know that the lion is the king of the jungle. He's the king of beasts. The ox is the king of domestic beast. But the eagle is the king of the air. Of all the birds that God created me made, the eagle is the greatest of all those birds. And I'm reminded when, and you don't have to turn here, Exodus 19 and verse 4, God says, you know for yourselves. You know, you know for yourselves. And you have seen what I have done unto the Egyptians and how I bore them up on eagles' wings to draw them unto myself. Glory to God. God knows how to draw you unto Him. When you're going through a trial, you think that's at the end of the world. He said, I bore you up on eagle's wings. Eagles are the strongest bird in the air. And how do they get their strength? Because eagles don't eat no junk. They eat fresh food. They'll go fishing, and they'll get a, a nice trout, take those talons and just like that, get a fresh fish. Or go out in the field and get a rabbit or a squirrel or 
maybe a lamb, and they eat fresh food. Now, the eagle has a first cousin named the buzzard. He eats anything. You ever see them on the side of the road? They'll eat a dead carcass, eat rotten meat. It just, it, you know, and that's why some Christians are, they listen and eat anything that comes from a pulpit across America. I've never seen the time when we substituted everything for the Word of God. I noticed one of the churches not long ago, they hired a comedian to come in and it cost $20 a head. How spiritual is that? To hear a comedian tell jokes. Testing one, two. That's not a good spiritual diet, folks. Amen. Here at Victor Temple, we don't depend on smoke machines and theatrical equipment and costumes to draw the young people in. Amen. Get them filled with the Holy Ghost. I said you get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Get them on these altars. Get them filled with the Holy Ghost. And you'll see God move in their lives. Amen. So we, we come to a place. We, one church brought a circus inside the church. Elephants, giraffes. And those animals was relieving themselves on that carpet. I'd hate to have been the janitor at that place. Eagles have a proper diet. They have a steady diet of fresh food. And I'm saying this for a reason. That's where they get their strength. And he chooses what he wants to eat. He don't eat leftovers. Is anybody listening to me? Have you ever heard you are what you eat? You ever heard that? And the reason that the eagle is so strong, he eats healthy. Help me, Holy Ghost. He eats healthy. And that, uh, that buzzard, his first cousin, he doesn't eat healthy. And that vulture, he does not have the strength nor the beauty, nor the lifespan of an eagle. Eagles live to be about 40 years old. And I'm teaching you about the, the eagle anointing. We've got to learn the characteristics of an eagle if we're going to have an eagle anointing. Eagles are strong. And God's paraphrase said, Woody Martin, I'm going to make you strong. I'm going to make you strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So because that buzzard don't eat properly, he don't live as long as the eagle. There's a lot of people today eating the wrong foods. Amen. I noticed this week where they say there's over 100 million Americans that have type 2 diabetes. Did you listen to me? And then I read where the average American person, adult, eats 150 pounds of sugar a year. From 150 to 170 pounds of sugar per year. That's just the average American. That's not talking about these people who weigh three and 400 pounds. Mm. Mitchell, how much do you weigh? One six four. Would you come here and help me preach? I'm talking about eating right. Our children today can't even pass a health exam. Obesity. You weigh how much? 164. 164. All right. He weighs 164. The average American eats a, from 150 to 170 pounds of sugar per year. He weighs 164. Now look at him. Can you imagine in one year eating him up? Huh? Can you imagine in 164 pounds and in sugar in your body, 150 to 170 pounds per adult per year that adults eat, and he's 164. Imagine how long would it take you to eat him? A year. 
No wonder everybody's got type 2 diabetes. Years ago, my wife, uh, she went to a doctor because she has a high blood pressure because she has to put up with me. And maybe you'll get that about 3 o'clock this afternoon. And he, or she tried to tell Peggy she had sugar diabetes. She said, I don't have sugar diabetes. You know what that doctor did? Through the mail, sent her some medication. Through the mail, this is for your diabetes. She said, I don't have diabetes. You know what the doctor's doing? And we got some good doctors. We've got spirit filled doctors. We've got doctors that know the word of God, doctors that pray over you. Thank God for praying doctors. So she went back and she said, did you take your diabetes medicine? She said, I, no, I don't have diabetes. And that doctor was persistent in her taking that med. And she didn't take it. Not one time did she confess that I have sugar diabetes. Had he spoke that on her and she accepted it and started taking those meds, I'll guarantee you she'd have diabetes today. You can have what you say, good or bad. So here we are. A hundred million Americans have diabetes. Now, folks, we're going to have to learn to eat right. I'm 77, and the older I get, my priorities change. The older I get, the more I want to stay here. And the more I want to stay here, I start eating better. Somebody help me with this message here today. Amen. You you can't you can't eat a, a a pack of little Debbies cakes and a half a gallon of ice cream before you go to bed. Amen. And come to church that next morning. I want you to pray for my diabetes. Come on now, folks. You need to help yourself. Oh, eat right. That buzzard don't eat right, but the eagle, eagle Christians eat right. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you. Give Mitchell a God bless you, would you please? We need a proper diet. Do you know the reason that people come to this church and we have visitors every Sunday? We had five straight Sundays. We had people from out of state. Started off the year from Toledo, Ohio, High Point, North Carolina, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, why we, people live in Atlanta, Georgia, and they get on 75 North and come to Knoxville, towards Knoxville, and they pass Chattanooga. And then they pass Cleveland, Tennessee. That's a Pentecostal Vatican of the world. Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, and drive right by those churches and that headquarters to come to Lenore City, Tennessee. You know why they do it? Because we have a proper diet here. We're giving them the Word of God here. We're getting miracles and signs and wonders because we're eagle Christians and we have the eagle anointing to minister to people whatever that need is. Did you know, now I got witnesses, we've had people from Africa to fly into these services? Nigeria? Johannesburg? Not one or two, I mean, fa entire families. Can you imagine what that cost? And we got people six miles from the church who won't even darken the door, supposed to be members. I don't think they're eager Christians. I think they may be buzzards. Because they eat anything that comes along. Any type of preacher food that throws out there. I'm glad I don't have to depend on some gimmick to get a crowd. The Bible says, Lord says, the, the signs would follow them that believe. And we believers around here. Amen. People come from all over the southeast. Within the last six months, we had people flying from 
uh, California, New York City, Brooklyn, New York, uh, Detroit, Michigan, flying in from other states to attend church here. I wonder why. I wonder, Facebook, we're still on. You didn't lose a sound. We're, we're still on. I just asked a question, and I'm waiting for a response. That's a, why would people drive those many, many miles? Brother uh, Charles and his wife Martha from Indianapolis, Indiana, came here about two Sundays ago. She's dying with cancer, breast cancer. We prayed the prayer of faith. I said, we prayed the prayer of faith for her. They may be watching today. Over here is uh, Alex McConnell and his wife. Several months ago, he was scheduled for a procedure, a rhythmic heart. And his wife, Joanne, called me. When you get this, my teaching on breaking curses, I'll send this syllabus to you, and you can read it as you listen to my CDs. And she calls me on a Thursday. I pray over the phone, and I said, God, when I finish my prayer after quoting Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. How are you going to have a heart attack if God is the strength of your heart? God is the strength of your heart. God, somebody shout, God is the strength of my heart. You can't have a heart attack. The devil have given God a heart attack for you to have a heart attack because God is in your heart. I don't believe God's going to have a heart attack. He's going to give you a Holy Ghost attack. A healing attack. And the specialist, Dr. Rogers at UT. I, I, sidebar, sidebar. Any of my church members, when you get sick, don't go to UT. Take your hand off your mouth, Peggy. Take your hand off your mouth. Come to God's hospital first. So they're prepping. Am I telling the truth, Joanne? They're, they're prepping. They're prepping him 6 o'clock that morning for that surgery. Both of you come here just a second. Would you come here just a second? I want, I want to take time to explain something to you. This is Alex and Joanne McConnell. And I, the Lord put them, connected them with us uh, probably two years ago, for, I don't know how long. Four years. By television. Thank God for TV. Hello out there in television land. Saw us on TV. And they've been with us ever since. But he was scheduled for that procedure. A rhythmic heart, is that what it was? Which consisted of stopping his heart and restarting it? Is that, that, huh? So they, they prepped him, was getting him ready. And somebody, I don't know if it's a nurse or somebody, said, let's run one more test. And they ran one more test. And what happened? He got healed. They canceled the surgery. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Teresa, would you get that uh, off that table there, that heart, that little scripture with that heart on it? That was how many months ago? October. October. You, he went recently for a checkup? He, he was just here two weeks ago at the North City uh, UT show. Oh, Dr. Rogers, a specialist. Cardio, Arlie, a cardi, heart, heart doctor. It's easy for you to say. Was everything okay? Perfect. What? Perfect. Perfect. Praise God. Get in on it, Tim. Psalms 37, 5 says, if you'll delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. I've got five scriptures here I give for heart patients. If we can't believe the word of God, what are you going to believe, folks? If, you, if we can't believe God, who are we going to believe? 
Muhammad can't heal. Buddha can't heal. Hara, 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 Krishna can't heal. But Jesus can heal. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever, saith the Lord. And for everyone that orders these four CDs and what I'm preaching today, we'll get my syllabus on, on health scriptures. Health scriptures. Your son Joe had the same problem you had, right? Rhythm and heart. He goes to the same doctor, same UT hospital, and they begin to run some tests, and they cancel his Amen. appointment. Hallelujah. Now, I wonder how come Joe, listen to him, I wonder how come Joe, his son, had the same heart condition that Alex had. Generational. His mother and father both had it. His mother and his father had it. But you know what Alex did? He stopped it in his family. Joe doesn't have that heart condition that he had years ago. You need to stop that heart disease, the sickness, diabetes. Stop it in your family. How do you stop it? Get the eagle anointing. Cast those spirits out in the name of Jesus. I love you, brother. Oh, Don't touch my microphone. I'm doing something different today. I love <laughs> Let's give them O'Connell so God bless you, shall we? And they live up in the Kodak. They, they have to drive down here when they're here. We had a man and his wife drive 800 miles from Oklahoma. Drove 800 miles to attend our miracle service. We prayed for them. God gave them a miracle. And then that night, I thought they might have been visiting up at Dollywood or Gatlinburg. I said, y'all visiting? He said, no. He said, we're going home tonight. So they drove 800 miles one way, and it's 800 miles back. 1,600 miles that they drove. Why? Because we have a spiritual diet here at the Victory Temple Church. Amen. Amen. Somebody say God is good. I am thankful that we offer something that's healthy in this church. I give you a steady diet. I preach on sin. I preach salvation messages. I preach on restitution and faith and signs and miracles and wonders following the spoken word of God. And God honors the words that come out of Woody Martin's mouth. To him be the praise and glory. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Now, the eagle, when they begin to mate or get married, the female eagle, she will do a couple of things to see if that male eagle is interested in her. And invariably, she'll go get a stick. She'll pick that stick up, and she'll fly way up, sometimes 15,000 feet in the air, and drop that stick. Just keep flying around, keep flying around. And if that male eagle is interested in her, he'll go and get that stick, put it in his talons, and he'll bring it back to her. And being a typical woman, she ignores him. She playing hard to get. I guess male eagles go, hmm, I don't need you. But she'll do the same thing repeatedly for about six times, and each time, if that male eagle is interested in her, he brings that stick back to her. And the last task is she will go down and get a, uh, like a fence post or a large limb. Eagles weigh 40 pounds, but they can carry up to 100 pounds in their talons. Think about that. How much strength and uh, wingspan strength that they have. She'll get that fence post or a big log and take that up 1,500 feet in the air. That thing's heavy. And she'll fly around 
and she'll do a figure eight just as fast as she can, a figure eight. And while she's doing that, she drops that log. She does it so fast, you almost can't see the log being dropped. And that male eagle that those eyes have the greatest set of eyes of anything on this earth. They can see five miles. Five miles. Think about if you can get on top of this church and look towards Loudoun, Tennessee, it's about five or six miles from here to Loudoun. And that eagle has that keen eye that he can see five miles. See storms coming before they get here. See danger coming before it hits. The eagle anointing warns you or pre-warns you of danger ahead and tells you and shows you how to prep and get ready for that storm. Storms come to all of us. Storms come to Woody Martin. Uh, that man of faith, yeah, yes, that man of faith has storms. So that big log is going down to the earth. And that male eagle, he'll go down and clip his talons into that log. And he'll bring it up to that female eagle, and she kind of smiles. And she says, I got you now, big boy. That's what that's Woody Martin's version. Don't look for that in King James. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, after she puts him through the test, and after he brings that log back, he retrieves that log to her. They fly 15,000 feet in the air, and they lock their talons together. That's putting the rings on the finger and they lock with their talons. And they twirl and twist and go around. And I don't know how eagles talk, but they scream to the top of their mouth. <laughs> That's their wedding ceremony. Amen. And I have found out also, young people that you want to get married, listen to me, eagles mate for life. Ain't no such thing as divorce. They mate for life. Well, I'll try him. If he don't work, I'll try. No, you ain't going to try none of them. Be sure you're in love. Put that man through the eagle test. But I wouldn't suggest using logs. You women know how to do it. How to trap. I can get a man. Amen. So, they mate for life. The, the age limit is about 40 years of the eagle. When they mate for life, that reminded me of Woody and Peggy Martin. 57 years that we've been married, we're mates for life. I'm not going to trade her in for a younger model. Because she knows me. She knows what pleases me. She knows how to please her man. And some of you women, you need to stand by your man. Everybody say, eagles mate for life. That's the reason God hates divorce. He hates it. But he loves divorcees. And we're not going to go there. So, this male and female eagle after they get married and by the way young people if you're going to get married if he or she is using drugs now it's a bad sign if he drinks right now and he, he gets drunk on the weekends don't marry him oh I'm going to change and you're not going to change him if he won't change and you're not even married, men are on their best behavior when they're courting. I said they're on their best behavior when they're dating you. 
And after the honeymoon is over, my God, hell's a belching and screaming and going on. And then you remember the words of the pastor, for better or worse. And sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. I wish I could get one amen in this house today. So that, now they have to start housekeeping. And they build the nest together. They go out and get sticks. And they will find the highest point that they can get. And according, don't turn there, Job 39, verses 27 and 28. Job 39, 27, 28. Job 39, 27 and 28. Doth the eagle mount up and maketh her nest on high? She dwelleth upon the crest of the rock and in the strong place. The Bible says, and in the strong place. She'll, she'll get a high at the cleft of the rock and build that nest where predators can't get to it easily protect her babies and she'll build that nest and she'll build that nest and sometimes she'll put a, a sharp stick in there for later on when the little eaglets are born and she wants to train them how to fly that sharp stick will stick them oh in the side and, they, and mama, that's mama teaching them one day you're going to have to get out of this nest you, when you get married, you're going to have to get out of mama's nest, honey. I know one man got married, took his bride home, and lived with his mom and daddy for 30 years. Lisa and Jeff went over to North Carolina and came back, didn't have, didn't have nothing. Didn't have nothing. All, the, all they had was a few clothes, and he went over there to be a pastor over there in North Carolina. And... and uh, this woman told him he'd be the pastor when he got over there. She was the pastor. She said, no, you're going to be my assistant pastor. Deception. Came back home. He's living with us. And I, one, one morning I said, Jeff, how much money would it take for you and Lisa to get your own place? First month, last month, damage deposit and all that. And that time it wasn't a whole lot of money. It was a whole lot of money. He said, about $500. I said, I said, here, you and Lisa, go find you a place. Give them $500. I never did see that money again. You never get, you never get through giving money to children. Never, never get over that. You're, you're praying there'll be a, a male eagle and take things on their own. No, they want to stay a baby eagle all their lives so you can keep, so you can keep them up. Well, moving right along. She, she builds that nest in a strong place up on a rock. Amen. And when she teaches these babies to fly, Deuteronomy 32 and 11, Deuteronomy 32 and 11, it talks about the eagle stirring up her nest. And by the way, you never see a roof over an eagle's nest. It's just a nest, no roof. Well, what do they do when it rains? Mama Eagle spreads her wings over that nest and protects her babies from the elements, the snow, the sleet, the rain, the winds, the storms. Oh, she's got them covered of her eagle wings. Mama Eagles take care of their babies. I could preach right there, but I'm going to move on. So here she is. They, they built that nest. And uh, she's going to teach these little babies how to fly. So if she's got four little eaglets, she'll put one of them under her wing. And she'll go out and she'll start flying. And all of a sudden, she'll drop that little baby eaglet and he's just fluttering mama 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 he's never flown before he don't know how to fly and just before he hits the ground mama eaglet comes up catches that little baby eaglet on her wing and you know what mama does she does it again 
takes it up 15,000 feet. He says, no, nah, I've never been this high before. Mama's got me up here. I've never been this high before. Whoop, whoop, there he goes. Oh, Mama, 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 Mama. <laughs> Talking about the eagle anointing. We've got to study the characteristics of an eagle. She does this for three days per eagle. And on the third day, she lets that little eaglet go. Those little wings fancies. Oh, that's what these are for. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah. It's like when I was teaching uh, Katie, my granddaughter, to swim. She was three years old. And I had her in the pool. She was dog, what was that? Dog crying. Pappy! Pappy! I'm going to drown. Pappy, Pappy. I'm going to drown. Pappy. I wouldn't want to let her drown. But I had to let her get used to the water and get over the fear. Pappy's teaching her how to swim. And all nine of my grandchildren, they swim like fish. My mama. April, my mama told me years ago, said, now son, don't you go in that water until you learn to swim. <laughs> Duh. Mama, I know you're a smart woman, but how am I going to learn to swim if I don't get in the water? And God helped me to learn to swim. So during that procedure, every one of those little eaglets, she bears them up on her eagle wings. takes care of those babies when the storm comes. Now, the number one enemy of the eagle is a snake. And one day if mother eagle's out looking for food or another thing, mama eagle and daddy eagle, they they claim a five mile five mile radius as their domain and very seldom get out of that they're excellent warriors hunters eating the food getting the fresh food but their number one enemy is the snake and if she's two miles away from home or three miles away from home she looks back at her nest to see if there's anything and all of a sudden she sees a snake slithering up the side of the mountain to get one of her little babies. And she'll turn and lock those six foot wingspans and like a jet, she's back at that nest. And she'll do one of two things. She'll either beak, take her beak and beak that snake to death or get him in his, in his talons and take it to the highest peak that she can find where a sharp rock is. And she'll take those talons and <laughs> teach you to fool my babies. <laughs> you don't ever do this again. <laughs> and the Bible calls it that a serpent, and the Bible refers to the devil. That old serpent, the devil. Hey. I said the devil is a serpent. Hey. And you need to do like Mama Eagle. Hit him against that rock and beat the hell out of him. I said, beat the hell out of him. One more time, beat the hell out of him. He said, hell. Well, it's in your Bible. The rich man in hell lift up his eyes, but it's too late then, Josephine. So she takes that snake to that rock. Who is our rock? Jesus. Jesus is the rock crusher. Hey! Ah, Jesus. I said, our Jesus is the rock crusher. Somebody say, Jesus is my rock crusher. Mm. 
That eagle, mother eagle, loves those children so much she risked her life. I know of a mother that her child, and I was there, that couldn't even swim, and her child fell in the deep end of the pool, and the mother couldn't even swim, and just dove in after that child, couldn't even swim. That mother instinct took over. That's my baby. That's my child. She couldn't swim, but she's going to do something to save that baby. Everybody say, Jesus is the rock crusher. He's your rock crusher. I'm going to prophesy to you, when you get in trouble, when you get in your storm, you better go to the rock. When you get in your storm, and I, it will come. I don't care how much faith you've got. Everybody that has faith is tried in every area of your life. I said earlier, you can get over one thing and the devil will throw something else. Right? You can get one child off of drugs and then you have your son come in and say, Mama, I think I'm gay. It's just one thing after another. You're in constant warfare. I said, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violence takes it by force. You've got to take out of the hands of the devil what rightfully belongs to you. Don't let the devil have your children. Don't let the devil have your grandchildren. Jesus is the rock killer. So that old snake, he's gone. She beats him to death. And if he could got a message back to his other snake friends, he'd probably say, don't come up here. Don't come up here. Because this mama is for real. Somebody say amen. All right, the eagle in the storm. The eagle can see the storm five miles away, the wind, before it gets to him. And what the eagle does when he sees that storm coming, he gauges the wind. You ever see these golfers on TV? They're, they're golfing and they do this, wet their finger. And, you know what they're doing? They're testing the wind. See which way the wind's blowing. It's blowing 12, 15 miles an hour. They want to hit that ball more to the right than they would to the left. Just That's their strategy. And Mama Eagle... Those eagle eyes, oh, there's a storm brewing. And she sees it. And when the wind comes, she will get on top of the wind. Are you listening to me? She gets above the wind before it gets there. And when it gets there, she gets right on top of the wind and she puts it on cruise control effortlessly it doesn't take a bit of effort she's just cruising what you doing mama I'm just chilling not wasting her energy not wasting her strength strategy and I'm saying when the tornadoes of hell blow against your house you need to go with the flow and get above that storm that the enemy has placed in your life and you'll get victory over it every time Somebody say, yes, Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord. When the storm comes, don't run from it. Find out which way the wind's blowing and just go with the flow. Just go with the flow. Hallelujah. And another thing is she's riding that storm and she senses that her child, that baby eaglet's in trouble, and she looks through that storm. She looks through the wind. And she happens to see that snake or maybe a mountain goat that's up there trying to get one of her little babies. She'll reverse and she'll lock those wing spans and she'll put those second shades of eyelids. She's got two shades of eyelids. 
one for normal flight and one for storms and looking into the sun. She'll pull those second shades down and she'll go through that storm. 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 She'll go that storm, go that, that, that storm just to get to her little babies. Amen. Parents, babies cannot take care of themselves. Take care of your children. Mentor your children. Tell them right from wrong. I don't play that remote down one time for about 30 minutes. Quit eating those potato chips and drinking those Pepsis. No wonder they're all obese. You don't have a proper diet for your child, and you're to blame. Oh, I felt a cold spell come through, didn't it? Mm. So that Mama Eagle, she, she's on the crust of the wind. And right before the ascent, she'll lock those wings. The first thing you know, she's above the storm. God says, son, I want you to be above the storm and the storm beneath your feet. God wants you to be above your storm. Hallelujah. It's time for Christians to put your spiritual wings on or your ascent up into the heavens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know, they get above that storm and everything is beautiful. The sun is shining. The storm's under them. They can still see the storm, but they're above the storm. I'm telling you this morning, God wants you to be above every storm that comes up against you. God wants to give you an eagle anointing to get above the storm and the trials and the temptations that you're going through. Whew, praise God. I'm preaching better than some of y'all letting on. And if, somebody say if. If you can't seemingly get the victory, I got a request while I go. That's my cause. Brother Martin, I want you to pray. I just eat all day long, and I need to lose 50 pounds. I said to myself, stop eating. I need to lose 50 pounds by... The end of the month, I said, honey, you're already behind. You're going to leave me 50 pounds in two weeks. Use good judgment. Eat right. Somebody say eat right. I couldn't tell you. I'm not asking for a show of hands of people in this building today that have health issues, diabetes, heart trouble, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, clogged arteries, clogged bowels. What did that do? But if you'll get this, these are my notes on heart trouble. I'll give you five scriptures on heart trouble. And they were. you can't find that flow if you just can't seemingly to get the victory over it you know what God's going to do God's going to cover you with his eagle wings God's going to cover you with his eagle wings somebody say amen. amen amen when you begin to ascend and go upward going up 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 and hallelujah Eventually, you're going to get above the storm. And you can shout, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me get above that storm. Isaiah 40 and 31. This has been our golden text for all these five messages. They that wait upon the Lord. Who? Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like what? Not the buzzard. 
mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They'll slow down and they shall walk and not faint. To those that wait upon the Lord, he's going to bear you up like eagle wings. He said, Israel, you know what I did to the Egyptians? And I brought them forth on eagle wings. Why? Just simply because he loves you. <laughs> so let's watch this. I said this a couple of Sundays ago. Waiting on God is not wasted time. Waiting on God is not, somebody say, is not wasted time. I'm going to show you three things that the eagle does. It takes hours to do this, but it helps the eagle. I'll share that with you in just a moment. I believe waiting on God is quality time. Amen. Spending time with the Lord in prayer. Yes. Having your daily devotional. Yes. Getting in the Word of God. Amen. I don't know how many young men have come to me. I want, I want to preach. I want to be like you. I want to preach. If I give them a test. I give you seven days to commit to memory seven scriptures. I haven't had one of them come to me yet with seven scriptures. Seven days? You ought to do that one day. Come, get in the Word of God. Waiting on God is not wasted time. It's quality time that you're spending in the presence of the Lord. Some of us say quality time. You parents need to spend some quality time with your children. Spend some quality time with your husband or your wife. Then spend some quality time with your Lord. Now when you get into full-time ministry like I am, you better be prepared to pay the bills yourself. And I believe in what I'm doing enough to pay bills myself. I want to build me a, a TV studio right here in the back. It costs about $100,000. Got one amen. Thank you, Elder. Got one spiritual person on the TV studio, but we're not going to go there right now. So, the Bible says, wait, or I say, waiting time is not wasted time. Say that again, waiting time, waiting time is, not, is not wasted time. And James 1 and 4 says, let patience have her perfect work in you. Let patience have that perfect work. Most of us, we pray for patience. We say, Lord, we need it immediately. I want it now. But sometimes you don't get it now. Sometimes you have to wait on the Lord. Now, sometimes the eagle gets sick, not because it eats bad food, but because maybe that rabbit that he ate was contaminated. Maybe that squirrel that he it was alive, but it might have been contaminated. He some way he got some food that he ate that the animal that he ate was contaminated and he gets sick. And the eagle knows when it gets sick, and the eagle knows when it's going to die. And I'll share that with you in just a moment. So he gets sick, not because of the wrong diet, but because he ate some contaminated food. So the first thing he does when he's sick, he flies to a big rock and he lays on that rock and he pulls his number two shades down and stares into the sun, just looks into the sun, just stares at it for one hour still staring into the sun with those number two shades down. And he gets alone with the sun, the, the S-U-N. If you really want to touch God, you get alone with God. 
Get along with God in a secret place. Amen. One hour. Two hours. And invariably on the third hour, as he's staring into that sun, that heat from the sun goes through his eyes and penetrates his body and touches a mechanism in his body and he realizes that he's healed. By staring at the S-U-N. I prophesy to you, if you'll stare to the S-U-N, the Son of God, the S-O-N, I should say, the Son of God, not the S-U-N, but stare in the face of Jesus. Stare it in the face of Jesus. The S-O-N. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, that mechanism in his body. Did you know our, God made our bodies to renew itself every seven years? But it can't because we've had this taken out, we've had that taken out, we've had this taken out, we've had that taken out. And, and the parts that's supposed to be renewed, they're not even there no more. What do you think God put tonsils in your throat? You didn't need them. Huh? You want to go to the doctor? I kill him. Let him clip him for you. It's quiet in here, isn't it? Facebook, the volume's okay. Facebook, just hang with me. Thank you for Facebook for letting us know when the volume's not right. Because I need to be heard. I said I need to be heard. I've got a message. I need to be heard. So the eagle goes up on that rock to be alone. I don't know about you, but if I'm not feeling good, I don't want to be bothered. I want to be alone. Amen. That's the reason when I make hospital visitations, I don't stay all day. Five, ten minutes max, I'm in and out. Because most times... Especially if it's a woman, she's uncomfortable lying, lying there and her preacher's there and, you know, she may have gas or something. And uh, I just pray for them and leave. You never, you never know. Do you want a lot of people around you when you're sick? I just want to be, leave me alone. That eagle said, leave me alone. I got to get alone. I got to get alone and stare at the sun. You want to have a you want to have a miracle ministry preacher? You want a miracle ministry? Get along with God. Get along with God. Get along with God and he'll talk to you. Watch TV all day long, play video games all day long. You feed that junk in and all you got is junk. You don't have a proper diet. You need a spiritual diet of the word of God. Can't hardly get no way man's but it's the truth anyhow. Commit this word to memory. I'm going to say, you'll never be great until you get along with God or unless you get along with God. Years ago, this must have been probably 40, before I started this church, over a little over 40 years ago. And I'm praying one day, and I saw this preacher on television and I said, Lord, I want a ministry like his. And God spoke back and said, why do you want a ministry like his? I said, well, Lord, he's on television, this city and that city, and he has a nationwide uh, ministry. And the Lord spoke back and said, why would you limit yourself to just a few cities? I said, Lord, I don't want a ministry like his. I want a greater ministry. He's on television. If I called his name, you'd know him. Today, he's not on television nowhere. But I saw him on Facebook. Younger than me. Younger than me. I'm 77. He's about 70. Younger than me. He is slouched over like I was glad he's on Facebook. Glad he's on Facebook. Humped over like this. Could barely talk. And I admire him for trying to preach and to teach. But in his frail body. 
He was humped over like that. And he read his scripture, and they brought him a chair, and he had to sit down to teach the word for about 30 minutes. And then the Lord, then I remembered the word of the Lord. He's Facebooking it, and there's nothing wrong with that. He said, son, you have a worldwide ministry reaching 200 countries around the world. I said, thank you, Jesus, for me not limiting you to just a few little TV stations. Eagle Christians, eagle anointing. Is anybody enjoying what I'm giving you today? So after he gets healed, he goes back to eagle to his uh, regular daily walk. Three times he goes to a rock. When he's sick, when he's molting, get shedding feathers, or when he's dying. When he's sick, molting, or dying. Everybody say sick, sick. molting, molting. Or, dying. or dying. So he's on that rock, staring at that rock. He gets healed. The heat of the sun penetrates his eyes. You know, they say heat is good for arthritis. Some people move to Arizona, warmer climate. That, that, that's understandable. I believe God can heal many ways, not just one way. God can heal many ways. He heals by uh, eating right, too. I can't get that out of my mind for some reason. All right, when he's molting those feathers, that means change is coming. And I've pastored this church for 44 years and people hate to see change well we've done it this way for 15 years why can't we keep on well maybe God wants us to change like I told Harry this morning I said I want to use a lapel mic this morning why? because I want to change I didn't say it that way but I explained to him I'm going to have to have my hands free illustrating my message today, wingspan. See, if I had that microphone, I got a little, you couldn't hear me if I had that microphone out there. But I hope you heard me with that microphone right here. But we hate change. The molting season, those old feathers are coming off of that eagle's body. Getting ready for new stuff. How many of you like new stuff? Oh, glory, hallelujah. My God, I felt that. Hallelujah. Somebody say new stuff. New stuff. Oh, my God. Say it again, new stuff. Yeah. He's going to get new feathers. Yeah. New, brand new feathers. Yeah. I believe God can give you a brand new body at the age of 60. Yeah. I said God can renew your strength at the age of 70. Yeah. He knows he's going to be renewed. Those old feathers are going to come off and God's going to renew him. Say it again, Renee. New stuff. I like that. Amen. You need to go to the, to the store, your favorite place, and say, I want some new stuff. I want a new dress. I want some new shoes. I want some new stockings. I want a new tie. I want a new coat. I want a new hat. I want a new watch. I want some new stuff. God, God going to renew you. Give you some new stuff. Shout it one more time. New stuff. He's renewing himself and he's restoring himself by looking into the S-U-N. So he goes to the rock when he's uh, sick. He goes when he's molting. And the third time when he's dying. He goes to that rock, and he's dying. He knows he's dying. When Peggy was sitting with her father, he knew he was dying, and the family did too. And Peggy Pruitt Martin, my wife, was with her father's bedside when he was dying. 
You remember what he said? When he's He lifted up his hands. Peggy said in her, her own father, he lifted up his hands and the angels came and received him. He knew he was dying. He lifted up his hands as to say, come on, Lord Jesus. Come on. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And that eagle, it's dying. He's looking into the sun. Early in the morning, he's lying there all day. And I believe, can't really prove this scientifically, they probably could. But before that sun goes down, he's staring at that sun. And maybe 30 minutes before the sun goes down, the eagle closes. Ever to open his eyes again, never to look into the sun again. I believe if we live for the Lord, live for Jesus, when our loved ones are dying, it will not be as hard to give them up when we know they look to Jesus, when we know they look to Jesus, the author and the finisher. So what is the eagle anointing? The eagle anointing is when you as a believer, you soar like an eagle over and above all of your problems, your storms, the wind, and everything that the devil brings up against you. Clap your hands for the Lord. Church, if you and I are looking for the Son of God, Amen. Jesus Christ, when it comes our time to die, it will be easier to let go of our loved ones. Amen. I've had funerals, and you've probably been to them as well. People are so emotional. I don't want mama, I don't want you to go, Mama. And you hold on to Mama. She's cold. Already gone. You don't want to give them up. But blessed are those that die in the Lord. Somebody dies in the Lord. We, we call it home going. It's not a loss. Oh, I'm sorry you lost. Well, she wasn't lost. I know where she's at. She's in heaven. I'm sorry you lost your grandma. She wasn't lost. She was saved. So she, I know where she's at. She's in heaven. Amen. It makes it easier. Amen. God, God's yoke is easy. He has grace for every need. He has saving grace. He has healing grace. He has dying grace. When our loved ones die. Everybody say the eagle anointing soars. So in a nutshell, I've I've taken over an hour to share this with you. In a nutshell, the eagle anointing is when the eagle Christians soar into the heavenlies and get above their problems on this earth. Amen. Clap your hands for the Lord. Do you enjoy the word of God? Facebook, and if you're not friends with me on Facebook, if you'll request to be a friend, I'll accept you if you don't put ugly pictures on there and, and use profanity and talk about presidents and uh, movie stars and stuff like that. You know, Facebook is not family feud. If you notice me on Facebook, I'll, most of the time I have an eagle. 
That's my insignia. I'm an eagle preacher because I have the eagle anointing. And I started to go over there, that woman in that wheelchair and pray for her. She's had a stroke. But Kimberly, stand to your feet. I saw the eagle above your head as I was preaching. And I saw the Lord taking those concerns about your job. And he, the Lord, put them in his talons. The eagle did. And he lifted him up off of your head and off of your shoulder. This has been so traumatic, it's affected your breathing. It's like a smothering spell. Is that right? It's like a smothering. Come to me. Stand right here. Stand right here. And I can still see that eagle. In the vision, I see the eagle. Now, prophets see things. That's what distinguishes them from regular preachers. And sometimes it's crazy things, and I will admit that. But as long as we get results, that's all that really matters. But I see it. My God. I see this eagle over you, and in its talons, it has like money. It's gold looking. And I don't know what kind of job you do or where you work at. God's going to give you another place to work, and it's going to be more money. More money. Because I see the eagle releasing out of its talon dollar signs. Dollar signs. And you've been so disturbed about this, it's almost smothered, like a smothering. If I be a prophet of God and I have the eagle, anointing upon me, what I speak to you will come to pass. You will not have no more smothering spells. You're going to look at the S-O-N, the Son of God to Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Lord, that eagle has the most perfect vision of any created being that God made that can see up to five miles. And I heard the Lord say, He's going to give you a vision that you'll see things the way the Lord sees them. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, receive. Lord, I break and I destroy every hindering spirit. Oh, let it out. Just let it out. It's, oh, yes, there it is. There it is. There it is. That's it. That's it. Just let, it, let, let her down, brother. Let her down. Let her down. Let her down. We don't want her to dance all over the place. Just let her down. This precious thing has sat here for two hours. Can hardly speak. Stroke on the left side, the leg, the hand, lifeless. You know what? That's the way Katie Martin was. You remember that, Lois? When Mama had her stroke, that stroke. Couldn't even lift her hand to comb her hair like like this hand. My own mother. See what happened? When I let it go. It just fell down. Same thing on her leg. Do you keep her, Kim? This is Kim, one of Kim's patients that she stays with. I'm glad she brought her to church. When you bring a hard case in here, I'm not going to go out that side door. I'll face them. My son, David, and it just blessed me. I was talking to someone else. He said, I've never seen my dad back down to anything. I said, thank you, Jesus. 
because I know a God that can do anything. You got any oil, brother? Thank you. What's her name? Libby. Libby. Can you speak to me, Libby? That's oil. She touched my hand. She's touching this oil. Is this okay? Can I pray for you? You love Jesus? I do. You do. How long has you been this way, you know? A year in September or something like that? The God I serve is a God of restoration. Lord, I pray for Libby. For this stroke. God, touch these limbs. Touch these legs. This left leg and this left arm. God, you heal Katie Martin. And I prayed for her. God, I want you to touch Libby. Give her a miracle, Lord. I curse it in the name of Jesus. Curse this in Jesus' name. Give me a right now miracle, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, manifest your power. Jesus, do it, Lord, for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? You're going to walk again. How old are you, Libby? How old are you? Seventy. Seventy? Well, I'm 77, and I'm walking. Do it, Lord. Let her walk again. Let her walk again. I curse the effects of this stroke. Renew the muscle in this body. Give her a right now miracle. Thank you, Lord, for the manifestation. Jesus' name. Her leg is just like, just like a rag doll. She can't even move it. Can you move your leg? Pull it back to you. That's uh, that's it. Praise God. That's a good sign. Can we do Holy Ghost therapy? Libby? Hold this for me. Can you hold that for me? God, in the name of Jesus. Curse this stroke in the name of Jesus. Heal this leg in Jesus' name. Give me a right now miracle, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. With the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. With the stripes of Jesus, Libby is healed. You believe that? He was wounded for your transgression. Pull this leg back. Pull it back. This leg right here. Pull it. All right, see? Little by little. The Bible says to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Sometimes it's instantly. The lepers were healed as they went. I speak to you, Libby, that you will walk again under your own power without a walker without a cane or without a crutch yes Lord where did she live in Loudon well you found your home church yes she said yes (laughs) hallelujah I want to take seven minutes those of you that heard me preach this morning on the eagle anointing 
if you want to be an eagle Christian, an eagle Christian, I'm going to lay hands upon you in just a moment and decree and prophesy over you that you will be an eagle Christian. Not a defeated Christian, but you'll be an eagle Christian and you'll soar above your storms that come up against you. I'm going to decree that you'll be an eagle Christian. You will soar into the heavenlies. If you'll come to me right quickly, I'm going to take five to seven minutes and I'll be done. Stand on this holy altar. If you enjoyed the Word of God, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. As you're coming, say, Lord, I want to be an eagle Christian. If you won't hit nobody in the face, spread your wings. Spread your wings. Get a shot of this, Tim. Get a shot. Look at these eagle Christians. I believe I can fly. Woo! Hallelujah! Look at these eagle Christians coming up here. Oh, that's right. Oh, I want to be an eagle Christian. I want to soar. I want to fly into the heavenlies. I want to give them above the storms, the winds, the tornadoes of hell that come up against me. I want to fly as an eagle flies. They that wait on the Lord shall renew. Somebody say shall renew. Renew our strength. We shall run, not be weary. We'll walk and not faint. We're waiting upon the Lord for the eagle anointing to come upon us. Glory to God. Receive it in Jesus' name. I'm just going to touch you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Touch her. Heal. Heal. Heal this back. Heal this back. The power of God go through her body, even down to her tailbone. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing. In the name of Jesus. Eagle Christians, in the name of Jesus. Eagle Christians, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Eagle Christian, Eagle Christian, in Jesus' name. Lo, ba-ba-ba-ka. Eagle Christian. Every one of the family members, Eagle Christians. Lord God, Eagle Christians, in Jesus' name. Eagle Christian, oh Lord. Eagle Christian, soar into the heavens. Jesus name. Oh Lord, God, Eagle Christian, make him an Eagle Christian, soar into the heavens. Lord God, an Eagle Christian. Oh God, Lama Ethan, Lord God, Eagle Christian, bless the Millsop family in the name of Jesus. I lift a prophetic covering the eagle Christian. The spirit of an eagle will come upon them in Jesus' name. An eagle, you're, you're glowing like an eagle right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is in this place. I said the glory of the Lord is in this house. Whoa. Praising somebody. Whoa. Glory. Hallelujah. Eagle Christian. Yes, Lord. An eagle Christian. An eagle, an eagle Christian. Eagle Christians in Jesus. Let them soar. Lord, let Alex soar into the heavenlies, Lord. An eagle Christian. The spirit of the eagle Christian come upon him. Joanne. Oh, God. And for Joseph, get him in church on a regular basis. Lord, we don't have to work on Sundays. But be in the house of God, an eagle Christian. Glory to God. God says you as a baby eaglet from your birth. Your mother carried you. It's almost like John the Baptist. You'd almost feel with the Holy Ghost where you came up from your mother's womb. Hallelujah. And God says you're an ordained prophetess and to the Lord, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And God let you going to fly as an eagle. You're going to get above your circumstances. You're going to get above the storm. And that what the enemy meant for harm, God's going to make good out of it. The snake that has slithered, slithered and tried to destroy you and your family, he has not been successful. He will not be successful. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God.
Somebody needs to praise the Lord. Some, oh, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout Eagle Christian. Say it again, Eagle Christian. Hallelujah. Eagle Christian. Oh, God. There it is. You will take the word. And as the mother eagle protects its eaglets, God says your wings and your prayers will protect your children, saith God. Satan cannot have them. And not a one of them will die in their sin, saith the Lord, because of the eagle anointing upon you, saith God. Ah, oh, Mama Katarabakaya. Hmm. Lord, this is one of my baby eaglets here. She's just a baby Christian. And I feed her, Lord God. Let her be strong in the Lord and in the power of her might. God, I want unexpected money to come to her for repairs and for things that need to be done to help her, Lord God, to succeed and to go on in life. In the name of Jesus, I lift a prophetic covering over her in Jesus' name. Touch in Jesus' name. There it is. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, in the name of Jesus, the eagle anointing to be upon this vessel. The eagle anointing to be upon this vessel. In the name of Jesus, touch and bless. In Jesus' name. Lord, we've already claimed Morgan. Lord, for your glory. She shouted in this church and danced before you in the Holy Ghost. God, you're going to do it again. In the name of Jesus, the eagle anointing is going to destroy every yoke, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Lord, let the eagle anointing come up on this vessel. Jesus, touch her, Lord. Give her a heart's desire heart's desire in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah God says it hasn't always been easy but the Lord has always made a way for you you're new to the area but God brought you here today to hear this message you believe that yes amen and God says you found a landing place when that eagle when she builds that nest that's her home she never leaves that home her and her husband they mate for life they don't go from one nest to another. That's their per They put roots down right there in that area and claim that five-mile radius as their turf, as their territory. And God has set you down here this day, young lady. I anoint you and I bless you in the name of Jesus that the spirit and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, let her soar into the heavenlies. Let her soar. Oh, God. God said he laid his hand upon you. And he's called you to be a prophetess in this last day, saith the Lord. You shall open your mouth, and I, the Lord God, shall give you words to speak. I'll give you futuristic events even before they happen, saith God. My anointing will be upon you. The eagle anointing shall destroy the yoke, saith the Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's come over here. Man, we need a bigger church. No longer than you've been saved, the Lord has given you a wealth of knowledge. No longer than you've been serving the Lord. Now remember when your husband prayed for you, you had epileptic seizures about three years ago or so. And he anointed you with oil, and you haven't had a seizure since, right? No. Who do you think did that for you? Jesus. Amen. You know what? Because he loves you. One of my favorite scriptures, but he delivered from witchcraft. Deuteronomy 23 and 5, the Lord God will reverse the curse. He said he'd reverse the curse. You'll learn that if you'll get my CDs on breaking family curses. Why would he reverse the curse? He said, because I love you. Woo, glory. And because God loves you. Now, the Lord has given you knowledge of his word, which tells me you have a teachable spirit. And by having that teachable spirit, you're going to be able to teach others also because you've been through a lot. And you'll tell them, God brought me through it, and he's going to bring you through it. You are a witness. 
You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I do. Amen. And the Lord does too. Lord, for the eagle anointing, I decree that every person here today will have the eagle anointing and the, be an eagle Christian. Not a lukewarm Christian, but an eagle Christian in the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord, for your glory. Hallelujah. And I know you've been through a lot, and you've had a lot of hardship. But God says, that's in the past. That's in the past. Paul says, forget those things that are behind you. Forget those things that are behind you. Forget those things. God says, the best is in your future. From this day forward, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have you ever been slain in the Spirit? You haven't? Would you like to if the Lord would put it on you? Just close your eyes. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord, do it. Do it. And far greater than that, completely heal this body. Every infirm spirit, I drive it out. I drive it out. Lord, I remind you of the prophecy. You said my prayers would be stronger than medication. I manifest that right now, dear God. I manifest that right now in the name of Jesus. My prayers be stronger than medication. Do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, let him be slain. For your glory. Take the brakes off, son. Take the brakes off. Woo. One more time, Lord. And, uh, give me just a little bit more oil. Just a little bit more oil. Because there's going to be a double potion. All right. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Slain, Lord God. Holy Spirit, get all, Holy Ghost, get all over him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, while you're there, pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. Lord, there's a little baby eaglet here. And I pray for this little eaglet. This little baby eagle, Lord. Keep her safe from any school bomb threat. I pray a hedge of protection over our children, not only in this church, but for this nation. I bind the spirit of sorcery, the spirit of drugs. That young man in Florida, he was overly medicated, mental altering drugs that he's been taking for months. And many complaints, the sheriff's department went to his house and they heard him make the bomb threats, the shooting, but they didn't do nothing about it. But I know somebody can. Holy Ghost, you do something about it. Holy Ghost, protect these children. Holy Ghost, protect these babies. Lord, I lift a covering over every school in the name of Jesus. I bind every terrorist act in the name of Jesus. God, give us protection in this nation of ours. In Jesus' name. And I bless you that you'll be protected in Jesus' name. God, touch this little child. Oh, Lord, touch this baby. Keep your hand upon her, Lord. Keep her from hurt, harm, and danger. Don't let no drugger come nigh her, no molester come nigh her in Jesus' name. But I pray for the eagle protection over this child in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What's your name, son? Andrew. There's a disciple named Andrew. Bible. Pardon? You've learned? Amen. You know that, right? Amen. Hallelujah. What are you, about 14, 15, 16? Heard the Lord said he's going to make you a student of the Word. A student of the Word. Can you get my Bible right there, Brother Avery? Just everything all together. Just bring the whole thing. Lord told me to lay my Bible on your head and 
this word is going to filter down into your mind. You will be a student of the word of God. Amen. Give me a tissue. that gum in here. Don't stop chewing gum long enough to get this prophecy. I'm just serious. Do you remember the first few words I said to you? All of them. And he was going to make you a student of his word. Amen. I lay this is the prophet's Bible. When you get these CDs on breaking generational curses, you're going to get my syllabus, my personal notes. I never give nobody my personal notes. But God told me the wisdom that he has given me, I need to share it with the people. Over 50 years of Bible deliverance, God has gifted me to get people delivered. Hallelujah. And I pray for Andrew. Lord, that you said he'd be a student of your word. Oh, Holy Ghost, as I hold my Bible over his head, let him have a photographic memory of your word. Let him hide that word in his heart that he would not sin against thee. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let a portion of my anointing be upon him in Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. The Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. You felt that, didn't I you? Did indeed. Yeah. Did you feel that? I did. Well, take it all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jeremiah said, My knees became weak because the presence of the Lord. His knees got weak when he came into the presence of the Lord. Huh? Breathtaking. Breathtaking. You all are witnessing a move of the Spirit, Facebook, a move of the Spirit of God. Now, what do you think about that? I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled for you. Just praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on up here, folks. Come on up here, Miss Martin. Here's Mama Eagle. She take care of Daddy Eagle and those four other eaglets. I didn't say idiots, I said eaglets. We got four children, if you didn't know. If you didn't, if you didn't nobody shared that with you. Lord, I thank you for my precious wife. I thank you for her wisdom, her knowledge, her companionship, her love for her family, for her husband. I ask you, God, that you touch her in a mighty way. Give her a double portion of the eagle anointing. Lord, she's such a stability for me, an encourager, an anchor. I bless her. Touch her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Put strength into this body. Give Woody and Peggy Martin longevity on this earth. The favor of God is longevity. We thank you, Lord, that you bless us these years and you're going to bless us many, many more years. I speak it. And for all our eaglets, our children, and our grandchildren, keep them, Lord. Protect them supernaturally by your power. In Jesus' name, and it is done, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How long y'all been married? 33 years. 33 years. Wow. 34 next month in March. Hallelujah. The Lord said if, if we would delight ourselves in Him, He the Lord would give us the desires of our heart. You've been married 34 years and it's time for you to have a new house. A new place. Huh? 
That's what we've been praying for together. Uh, together? Yes. Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God, for their heart's desire. In the name of Jesus, do it, Lord, for your glory. Lord, this material thing in this home, that's wonderful. But, Lord, spiritual household, I thank you, Lord, for this entire family being saved and living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, make a preacher out of someone in this house. Make a preacher out of one of these sons in the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord. Oh, glory. I think she's happy. Can you rejoice with her? Oh, the Holy Ghost will set your feet a dancing. The Holy Ghost will fill you through and through. The Holy Ghost will fill your heart with dancing and dancing in your heart too. A little bit more volume there, Bishop. You receive it? You receive it? I do. Hallelujah. You know what? You all just need to be regulars around here. Well, that's why I was going to tell you that we're going to make this a home church. Well, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. I'd be honored to be your pastor. We'll take some members in the next, what, next Sunday or next Maybe not next Sunday. Wanda, would you come up here right quickly? I want you to speak uh, briefly about next Sunday is, uh, is Black History Sunday. Hallelujah. Have you enjoyed the word today? Does anybody need a CD of today's service? It's $5. You can take it home with you. If you want a CD, raise your hand right now. Christina gets hers free. There's one, two, three, four. Go ahead and make seven, Elder, if you would, please. We wore Harry out, and I guess he had to leave. I was preaching out of the tent one night. I wore three drummers out. I sung for an hour and a half. Three drummers. They took, they took shifts. Then another one to come in. Amen. And when that anointing gets on you, you've got to obey God, folks. Amen. We're already here. Why don't we have church? Huh? Don't don't stop early. And uh, you know, the only time people get con time conscious when they come to church, they can watch a ball game for three hours. Don't think nothing about it. Can you hear me now? Amen. Amen. But next Sunday will be Black History Sunday. We encourage you to wear your African attire or your brightest colors. Or your brightest colors. Man, I got some. Well, you'll see next Sunday. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. And I do I encourage you all to come and, and wear your bright colors and to hear some history of what I prepared on uh, really uh, 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 Miss uh, Parks, the uh, lady of the civil rights movement. Uh, everybody think it was Dr. King. It was more uh, Dr. Parks.